Our next guest is a scientist you definitely want to know more about. In 2017, she became the first Indigenous woman in Canada to earn a PhD in astrophysics. Then she moved to Hawaii as the resident astronomer of Canada-France Hawaii Telescope. And now she's back in Toronto, the star of a new docuseries called The North Star. My dad's family is Innu. It was out there in the woods that I really started developing my sense of observation, along with my scientific curiosity. The series dives into her indigenous roots, her love for astronomy, and how she is breaking barriers for women in astrophysics. Laurie Russo Nepton is with me in studio this morning. It is so great to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Laurie, I understand that your fascination with the stars began when you were a kid, when you were a child. Yeah. So how does that love turn into a career in astrophysics? Yeah, it took time. Because when I was young, I didn't have any idea you could be an astronomer. Um, I don't think it's a career I even know existed, <laughs> you know, when you're a kid. But as time grew, I knew as a scientist, I was so curious. I was asking questions to my family. And when it came the time to decide, I decided to pick physics a science that study everything in the universe. How do you go from physics to astrophysics? Yeah, I was doing grad, grad school. So um, after a bachelor degree, um, I had to think about a project that I would do for my master. And that's when I met Carmel Robert, who was my supervisor then. And um, she suggested project to study galaxy. And even better, she was suggesting that I would use a prototype, an instrument unique, built in Canada, to do it. So uh, I jumped into that project and I really loved it. I think this is great for anyone who's listening at home who thinks, hey, I'm really curious. Science could be my thing too. And I don't know that people always make that connection. That's true, yeah. Um, that's like something that I think my family noticed in me. I was asking so much questions and it was obvious, <laughs> you know. Lori was gonna be a scientist <laughs> and my dad kept saying everybody that I was gonna be an astronaut. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, he was not, too far from reality, I became an astronomer. That's yeah. amazing. I love that you mentioned your family because that's my next question. You obviously grew up hearing stories about the stars from your family. Yeah. How did those stories influence your career today? Yeah, yeah, you know, we, we often took the time to go out and look at shooting stars and auroras if there were some. Um, my dad would wake us up in the middle of the night for that. Oh my um, gosh. And I remember some, at some point, he couldn't answer, you know, the questions because they were like too advanced even for him. And, and then I was like, okay, if I want to know more, you know, I need to go else, you know, elsewhere. And the university was a place for that, to learn more. And it affected my whole career and my science. I'm just continuing to ask those questions today. Your studies took you to Hawaii. What did yes. you do there? Yeah, so I followed an instrument. Uh, I followed a camera that was built in Canada, built by a team uh, that I was part of. And um, since I was an expert with that instrument, I was there to help people using it at the telescope there on an international size telescope. So it was really nice, six years of work, doing all sorts of science and helping people to look at the sky with that instrument. That's amazing. You were the first indigenous female scientist to earn a PhD in astrophysics in Canada, which is like I said, yeah. you're <laughs> it's, it's staggering, it's a huge accomplishment. And then today you are now getting to teach the next generation of scientists. So I'm curious, from when you were a student to today, yeah. now you're the teacher, has yeah. the diversity of the students changed at all? Yes. Really? It, yeah, it has. And uh, I'm glad about that. Uh, I, I already have three women <laughs> students that are gonna be working with me this semester. I'm very excited about this. I know that also being a woman helps them to feel, you know, feel good about their work and feel like they're listened to and uh, that their opinion matters. So to have these generations of women, you know, there, is absolutely essential. And it was there for me as well, because I had a, a women supervisor. And now you get to mentor these students. What does that feel like for you to be the mentor? Yeah, yeah, I feel like uh, I can at least give them good advice, I know what it is. I know how they can feel like. It's not easy. Uh, you always question yourself. You know, you're hard on yourself. And so uh, having, you know, experienced all of that, I know I can share, um, share that with them and make sure that for them it's a little easier. For people who watch the series, The North Star, yeah. what do you hope they take away from it? Uh, I want the kids to watch the show and uh, where, wherever they are, whoever they are, um, that they feel that they can be scientists and that they don't have to fit into that weird like you know, like the typical scientists that we think of, you know. Like Einstein. Yeah, yeah, they don't have to be like that. They can keep their color, their personality, and they can do science. 
as long as they are curious. And uh, I want people also from their family to know that the only thing that they have to do is just to encourage them. I love that. Well, Laurie, I'm a meteorologist, so from one scientist to another, rock on. That's <laughs> <Thank> awesome. <you>. <laughs> it's great to meet you this morning. Thanks for yeah, being here. Thank you so much. You can watch North Star for free on nfb.ca. We'll be right back. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.